Have you been wanting those images that are really, really sharp when you photograph up close? If so, this is the video for you. We're going to dive into Zareen Stacker's basics. It's going to help you so much. You're going to want to stack every photograph that you shoot. Hi, I'm Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography, and this is the place where we talk about macro and landscape photography, post-processing, equipment, behind the scenes, you name it, and we will chat about it. We're gonna go now into Zareen Stacker, and I'm gonna share with you the basics to get you going and make these beautiful images with this amazing program. So let's get to the computer now. Okay, before we get started, I do want to let you know that Zareen Stacker only takes TIFFs or JPEGs. So you can see I've started the stack here. What is close to me, this is what's in focus. And here are the various shots. That I took. You can see now that I'm going towards the back and up here and here the water drops back in the very back and these guys right here. So what I do is do a shift click, I'm in Lightroom and I'll go to the develop module and I'll just rush and develop these really quick. going to open up the program here that's one way to get your images into Zareen and you can go to file add files these are my source files and I would just go ahead and click on the top one do a shift click and then open normally my files are in a specific area. So what I'll do is I'll do the first image. I'll do a shift click. I right click, export, and then I go to Zareen Stacker here. And then it's exporting all of these images right into Zareen. Another way, which is really easy, is all you have to do is drop your files or folders right in the input files area right here. So we'll just move this over and I'm going to go, this is where I save them, the tips because I'm making the Zareen basic stack and I'm just going to go in here and just drop them right in and boom, see how fast that is? Very nice, very nice. Over here to the left you can see these are the input files, this is all of the files that we're going to stack today. So what I always suggest, let's just do this. And if you guys know me, I'm not going to be crazy technical. You can go look for technical stuff. This is just flat, straight out how I teach. I'll go ahead and explain these in more detail as we are stacking. I'll go ahead and align and stack both a P Max and a D Max. And I'll explain to you what each of them are in easy terms. So what the Pmax does is every time there is a different contrast in your image. So you can see that these water drops in here, there is a different contrast between them. Whenever there's something in your 
image that's very sharp, you will see contrast most of the time between it. That's what this program sees. It pays attention to what the contrast is. You can see this is lighter than this. You can see that the lines are different. It's really amazing to me how it really takes the contrast and it really does focus on that. And that's how it determines what's sharp and what's not. Now the D map is another way of looking at the photograph. Of course, it's all done with algorithms or whatever, how they do it, because I'm not like that. I'm just more, what is it going to do for me? So the D map, what that does is actually fine tunes each of the areas and pays attention to the depth and what is really sharp and what is really soft. That D map is so amazing. It really does work well with fine tuning and really get into the fine details of making your image nice and sharp. But it has problems with soft areas like this. So if you have a soft area, you're going to pretty much need to clean that up if you are only using the D map. So this is another basic part that's super duper important. This right here, the set contrast threshold, because the D map is so intense and has problems with the soft areas, it's good to mask that out. So the program right now is taking the black areas and so it's locating where it's soft. It doesn't have those really tight detailed fine-tune areas that's in focus. So as you push this over to the right, you can see here's the threshold. Now you have nothing, so that's like a waste. You don't want to do that. <laughs> but you do want to get rid of some of the soft location, the soft area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in. And it could. what I like about this, though, is that you can see the mask. We know this area is soft. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll get a mush and halo, and that still will happen. And this one will, it should, because I've made sure that this was a difficult image to process because you have so much in focus and, and some stuff that's out. So let's just go ahead and do like 52. I'm looking around here to see how, especially in this area. But if I go this far, I'm afraid that I don't have very much that's going to be. Let's just go ahead and we'll do it right about there. That might be too much, but we're going to try it out. Now the D map will really check the depth and make sure that the soft areas won't be as mushy. But if I pushed it too far, then I'm not getting details. So with a complex image like this, I may have to tone that back down again. So we're going to look at it right now as soon as it's done. Okay, so it's done with the DMAP. Over here to the left, these are my source files that it was working with. And over to the right is what the Zareen Stacker has come up with. So this is my input files and this is my output image. When we get into the stacking, 100% is just the average. To tell you the truth, when you're getting in close, 200 is even better because if you have anything that's messed up, you will see it. Like right in here, it's blended through. I suggest the least amount is really looking at your image at 100% and then go farther 200 to really see where the problems are because you want to fix everything here in Zareen. It's harder to me to fix in another program like Photoshop. So, and I'm going to share with you how easy it is to fix. So there's two ways that you can fix this. You can look for your source files over here to the left and find that file. We'll do that first. I'll go to 50% and 
and then I'm gonna try to find that location. So let me get a little closer now. Go to 100%. Here it is. You can see that it's a little mushy. So that means that I probably took it too far when it came to masking. But we'll just go ahead and play with this. Do 200. This is sharp and this is better in here. So we'll go with this one first. And we're gonna go to edit, start retouching. And then there's my brush right here. And then all you do is I'm moving my bracket tool and then you just basically copy over what's in focus. It seems to me like I've lost some detail right in here. So I wanna bring that back. So not only can you use your input files, you can also use your output images. So we started with the D map, and now I wanna take the P max and see if there's anything in that that I can go ahead and work when it comes to the output image. So let's go ahead and click on that. And here is the Pmax. So let's go up close so you can see what the Pmax looks like. Let's get to 100%. And you'll see that it's a little bit grainier. One thing that I really like about the Pmax is Pmax always seems to do much better with the edges like this. So if you wanna clean that up, this is a great tool to clean up your edges. Let's show you how close it is so you can see what I'm talking about. Go to 200. Let's go ahead and get back to. And it's as easy as that. It works so great. The object is that you do need to make sure that you have a consecutive stack and overlapping what's in focus. That's why I'm giving you that video down below for you to check out because it's really important that you know how to do that. If you have a problem, you can just do the Command Z to remove, say if I did something here that I don't like, pay attention and then you just do the Command Z and it'll delete that from what you just did. Then what you'll do is you'll just go to Commit Retouching. And over here in the bottom left, you can see on the output images, we have a new file that's retouched. It's awesome, it's ready to go. You can keep these files for future reference, which is really good and you may need to use them later. So what we'll go ahead and do now is go to File, so one thing that is good that I like is that you can save the project. So this way, if I wanna come back to it, I can. And it's everything, you just boot it back up and you're really good to go. I wanna go ahead and just save the actual output image now. I'm all done, I'm ready to go. And I'm going to save it as a TIFF, 16-bit, yes and I'm gonna retain its dynamic range. And I'll do that because I want to do post-processing. Most of the time for me, post-processing is something that's in my workflow. So here are the, here's the information. Of course, you can rename it to whatever you want. I'll just go ahead and save that now. And it will go right to the file that we were working on. And we're done, voila! I made this Zareen Stacker Steps with everything that we just went through. So you can grab that with a link down below. You'll also get some great tips and even more freebies. So just say, yes, I'm in. Okay, I do want to share with you a quick tip. And it's because when we do a lot of post-processing and working on this and say we don't have all the time in the world to really get nitpicky and that you don't want to just get lazy and say I got to hurry up and do this that's what I love about saving the project so this is a little added bonus I want to share with you okay you can see over here in my file that I made for this video here is the saved project click on that and I take my saved project just like this and I drag it right over and boom, 
there is the project. So this way we can go back and work on either the retouching or say a DMAP down here in the output images. I'll pick which one I want to work on. I'll go back to the retouch. Go ahead and start fixing things. That wasn't too bad, right? It's so easy and I just appreciate having these wonderful software to really help us macro photographers. So remember down below, I have a link to share with you how to stack those images. And also there's even more freebies down below to get to know me and to push you out of your comfort zone. I'm Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography and I help you get up close and personal with your camera. Remember, a thousand words does make a difference and I'm hoping you share your thousand words. Have a great day.